Hi, welcome to Shorty on the Fly. In this video, we are going to discuss one of the more controversial subjects in the sport of fly fishing, and that is the condition and organization of your fly box. You know who you are. If your fly box looks like this, or this, or perhaps even this, stay with me for just a few moments and we may come up with a cure for your ailment. And whether you tie your own flies or buy them, even though I'm no expert, just a guy with a few miles on him, I think that this little discussion may be of some assistance. A lot of times, when I'm presenting at various fly tying events, people comment on the appearance of my fly boxes and express admiration, amazement, and sometimes even a little irritation at the organization of those boxes. Remarks like, my boxes will never look like that, or your OCD is showing, are not uncommon. But my favorite question is, how do you get them all in there? The answer to which is, one at a time. So let's start there. The first step in getting organized with your flies is choosing a box that is appropriate for your needs. There are so many different types of boxes to choose from. We can't possibly cover them all here, so let's hit the fundamentals. The two most basic types of boxes are those that hold flies in a fixed position and those with compartments that allow the flies to roam free. Those that hold the flies in a fixed position are most often used for nymphs or streamers, in other words, sunken flies. Those with the compartments are most often used to hold dry flies or floating flies. Most of the time, those fixed position boxes are not appropriate for holding dry flies without compromising their wings or tails in some fashion, which is why we put them in the free range compartment boxes. In choosing a fixed position box, there are a couple of ways you can go. Some boxes have foam liners that allow you to position the flies in whatever fashion you choose. This can be helpful if you carry flies of significantly different sizes in one box. The other type of box has pre-cut slots in which you place the flies. This is my preferred type of box for a couple of reasons. First, when I'm considering how to go about filling that box, it establishes parameters in which I will work and allows me to pre-plan what is going into the box before I ever start. That process will be a subject of another little talk. But more importantly, as I use and lose flies over time, the empty slots in the box reveal just what it is that I need to produce in my next tying session. Yeah, that's where my OCD kicks in. Too many empty slots at one time start to bother me way more than it should. When you choose a compartment box, you need to consider one with different size compartments for different size flies. Dry flies can run anywhere from a size 8 all the way down to a size 26 or even smaller. So you need to make sure that the compartments can accommodate everything in a way that does not compromise their appearance or floating characteristics. I have found a slotted box that will actually hold both wet and dry flies in appropriate fashion. But that will be the subject of another video. The good news is that there are boxes available that hold both sunken and floating flies and I like these a lot. This style incorporates aspects of each box we've discussed thus far which can allow for a versatile selection of flies to take with you for any situation in which you may find yourself. I have enjoyed using this kind of box for quite some time now. Each side will hold approximately 100 flies. I have carried a box with mayfly patterns, a box with caddis, a general attractor box, and an antique box with older patterns which have somewhat fallen out of favor but still work even though many people now ignore them. So the next time you're looking to replenish your arsenal, look not to the Altoids tin or an old film canister. Set yourself up with a well thought out and organized box. After all, if you're a little more organized and can find what you need at a glance, you will be able to spend more time fishing and less time searching for your next fly. And for those of you shaking your heads at the number of flies I seem to have in my boxes, wouldn't you rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it?